Good morning. Welcome back to our Chronological Bible Reading. I'm Ray Reynolds, the minister of the Somerdale Church of Christ. We're going to be reading today from 2 Samuel chapter 10 and 11. So grab your Bible and also maybe get you a notepad or a journal so that you can take notes as we read and study the Word of God together. The Bible says it happened after this that the king of the people of Ammon died, and Hunan, uh, his son, reigned in his place. Then David said, I will show kindness to Hunan, the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness to me. So David sent by the hand of his servants to comfort him concerning his father. And David's servants came into the land of the people of Ammon, and the princes of the people of Ammon said to Hunan their lord, Do you think that David really honors your father because he has sent comforters to you? Has David not rather sent his servants to you to search the city, to spy it out, to overthrow it? Therefore Hunan uh, took David's servants, shaved off half their beards, cut off their garments in the middle and their buttocks, and sent them away. When they told David, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, wait at Jericho until your beards have grown and then return. When the people of Ammon saw that they had made themselves repulsive to David, the people of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Beth Rehob and the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 foot soldiers, and from the king of Mecca, 1,000 men, and from Ishtab, 12,000 men. Now, when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the army of the mighty, mighty men. Then the people of Ammon came out and put themselves in battle array at the entrance of the gate. And the Syrians of Zobah, Beth Rehob, and Ishtab, and Mecca were the, by themselves in the field. When Joab saw that the battle line was against him before and behind, he chose some of Israel's best and put them in battle array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he put under the command of Abishai's brother, that he might set them in battle against the people of Ammon. Then he paid, or he said, if the Assyrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the people of Ammon are too strong for you, then I will come and help you. Be of good courage and let us be strong for our people and for the cities of our God, and may the Lord do what is good in his sight. So Joab and the people who were with him drew near for the battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. When the people of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fleeing, they also fled before Abishai and entered the city. So Joab returned from the people of Ammon and went to Jerusalem. When the Syrians saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they gathered together then Hadadazer sent and brought out the Assyrians who were beyond the river, and they came to Helam. And Shobach, the commander of Hadadazer's army, went before them. When it was told David, he gathered all Israel, crossed over the Jordan, and came to Helam. And the Syrians set themselves in battle array against David and fought with him. When the Syrians fled before Israel, David killed 700 charioteers and 40,000 horsemen of the Syrians, struck Shobach, the commander of the army who died there. And when all the kings who were the servants of Hadadezer saw that they were defeated by Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians were afraid to help the people of Ammon anymore. It happened in the spring of the year, at the time when the kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked out on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And someone said, Is that not Bathsheba, the daughter of Iliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him, and he lay with her, for he was she was cleansed from her impurity, and she returned to her house. The woman conceived. So she sent to David and said, I am with child. Then David sent to Joab saying, send Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah had come to him, David asked how, Joab how he's doing and how the people were doing and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah departed from the king's house and a gift of food from the king followed him. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his Lord and did not go down to his own house. So when they told David, saying Uriah did not go down to the house, uh, David said to Uriah, Did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? 
And Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah are dwelling in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go to my house and eat and drink and lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. Then David said to Uriah, Wait here today also, and tomorrow I will let you depart. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. Now when David called him, he ate and drank before him, and he made him drunk. And at evening he went out to lie down on his, lie on his bed with his servants of his Lord. He did not go down to his house. In the morning it happened that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retreat from him that he may be struck down and die. So it was while Joab besieged the city that he assigned Uriah to the place where he knew there were valiant men. Then the men of the city came out and fought with Joab and some of the people, the servants of David fell and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war, charged the messenger saying, when you have finished telling the matters of the war to the king, if it happens that the king's wrath rises and he says to you, why did you approach so near to the city when you fought? Did you not know that they would shoot from the wall? Who struck Abimelech, the son of Jerubasheth? Was it not a woman who cast a piece of millstone on him from the wall so that he died in Thebes? Why did you go near the wall? Then you shall say your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So the messenger went, came to David and and all that Joab had sent by him. And the messenger said to David, Surely the men prevailed against us and came out in the field. Then we drove them back as far as the entrance to the gate. The archers shot from the wall of your ser at your servants. Some of your king's servants are dead, and your, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. Then David said to the messengers, Thus you d shall say to Joab, do not let this thing displease you, for the sword devours one as well as another. Strengthen your attack against the city and overthrow it, so encourage him. When the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah was her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when her mourning was over, David sent and brought her into his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. We really appreciate you joining us today for this time of study. Hope that you'll join us again tomorrow. Until then, may God bless you. Have a great day. Aww.